It's Dr. Gooden back again with another structural kinesiology video, this time talking about the muscle actions of the elbow and radial ulnar joints. Okay, here we are with muscles of the elbow and radial ulnar joints. So I have them grouped for you in two slides and then we'll look at each muscle individually. So the elbow flexors, I think most people are familiar with the first one, biceps brachii. Here it is on the list. And here it is on the picture. You can see it has two heads there. Brachialis, which is deep to the biceps brachii. And brachioradialis, which is distal to both of those. It, it's uh, most of the, the muscle body is actually on the forearm, but it does cross the elbow. And it has an interesting array of actions that we'll look at. So here's brachialis. And then brachioradialis is right here, down in this bottom picture. And then some weak assistance from pronator teres in elbow flexion, and you can see pronator teres there. And it does cross the elbow, so it can assist in flexion, but that's not its primary action, as I'm sure you can tell by the name. Now the elbow extensors, we just have two triceps brachii, but it does have three heads that we'll look at, and then anconius, which provides some assistance in extension. The radial ulnar pronators, now we have three of them. Pronator teres, which is right here. And you can see our pronator teres is beginning up at this medial epicondyle and sort of wrapping around. And so if the fibers there shorten, it's going to pull the hand into pronation. Uh, pronator quadratus, which is down here at the bottom, the distal portion. And same thing, if this shortens that way, it's going to flop the hand over, so your palm down. And then brachioradialis, which we looked at in the last slide. And then the radial ulnar supinators, biceps brachii is a supinator. Um, because of its insertion on the radius. Supinator muscle is here, oops, kind of crossed it out, but there it is, arising from the lateral epicondyle. And then finally, brachioradialis is also a supinator. So the brachioradialis does two, uh, three things, really. It does elbow flexion, it does um, supination, and it does pronation, and we're gonna look at how it can do all three of those actions, two of which are seemingly contradictory. Now first, the biceps brachii. Notice that it has a, both a long and a short head. The long head is running up in between the tubercles of the humerus in the intertubicular uh, groove. And then the short head is running straight up to the coracoid process. Now the biceps obviously does flexion of the elbow, um, but it also supinates the forearm, and it supinates the forearm because of its insertion point on the radial tuberosity. Uh, because it's on the medial aspect of that radial tuberosity, if you are already pronated and you flex your bicep, it's going to pull that radial tuberosity around and bring it back around. You can notice if, if, you, um, if you ever weight train or, or you do curls at all, you can probably notice this if you put your hand down in supination and then you go to pull into pronation, you can see biceps brachii starting to move. And especially if you go fully into supination, you can see biceps brachii shortening right there. Um, it's also a weak flexor of the shoulder joint because it crosses the shoulder up here. Now, if you really wanna train your biceps through the full range of motion, um, then you have to add shoulder flexion into your curls. So let's say you're doing easy bar curls and you're starting all the way down at the bottom for full range of motion, maybe, maybe two degrees shy of the bottom so you keep that constant tension. And then as you come up, you don't just end with shoulder flexion, you need it, sorry, you don't just end with elbow flexion, you need to actually go into shoulder flexion a little bit to fully stimulate all of those motor units. We're getting a little Broish right now, talking about lifting too much, but um, but it's important when you're training or when you're just moving to think about the actions of these muscles. And it can also weakly abduct the shoulder joint if you're externally rotated. So think about external rotation at the shoulder. Now, my bicep, because it crosses the shoulder, the line of pull 
if I shorten my bicep, it's going to actually help me abduct my shoulder joint. Brachialis is just a true elbow flexor. Remember, it's underneath the bicep, so it's deep to it. Here's the biceps, and underneath there is the brachialis, and all it does is elbow flexion. Now, brachioradialis is that muscle that we talked about that's a little bit uh, complex because it has two seemingly opposite actions that it can perform. But if we look at this picture, and we look at the way that these fibers are running, it crosses the elbow, and we can tell that it does elbow flexion, and it is particularly strong in elbow flexion when you are in between a pronated and a supinated grip. So if your palms are facing your, your body, and you're doing what we call hammer curls, that's really going to hit the brachioradialis muscle. But now imagine if you pronated or supinated. So here's my brachioradialis. If I was to pronate, those muscle fibers are stretched. So contracting them will shorten me back into that um, sort of neutral position. And if I supinate, then those fibers are stretched in this direction. So shortening them will bring me back to that neutral position. So brachioradialis does flexion and pronation and supination. Here we see the triceps brachii, and we can see all heads of it. It has three heads. All three heads do extension of the elbow. Okay, so here's the long head up here, arising from the scapula, and the lateral head coming off the uh, proximal humerus, and then the medial head down here. All right, now in addition to extension, the long head um, also can extend the shoulder because of its attachment point on the scapula, it crosses that shoulder joint so it can help with shoulder extension as well as adduction of the shoulder joint. So if you're already out here abducted, that's going to stretch those fibers um, of the long head of the triceps and horizontal abduction. So really you can actually hit the long head of the triceps with rowing movements uh, because it does horizontal abduction as well as adduction of the shoulder. So if you're doing horizontal rowing or vertical rowing movements or if you're doing any type of shoulder extension, that will hit the, lungs, the long head of the triceps. And then we have the Iadibidi Anconius. I mean, honestly, I don't really know why it's there other than maybe for some joint stability there at the elbow, some added stability and maybe some lockout strength. Um, but it's very small, so it doesn't contribute very much force to elbow extension. Okay, now pronator teres, and it does just what the name says. It pronates. And we see it arising from the medial epicondyle and fibers crossing over that radial ulnar joint onto the radius. And when it contracts, it puts you into pronation, uh, but it also does weak elbow flexion because it crosses the elbow. Quadratus, pronator, uh, pronator quadratus. Now this is at the distal portion of this joint and it will not do any elbow flexion obviously, uh, but it does do pronation. And then supinator, the supinator is arising off of that uh, lateral epicondyle as well as the lateral surface of the um, radius. And we see it wrapping around there and it will supinate the forearms. So that wraps up the muscles of the elbow and radial ulnar joint. Pretty straightforward. Um, really the elbow joint, because it's a hinge type joint, really we just have flexors or extenders. Um, where it gets tricky is the remembering which pronators uh, and supinators might have other actions as well. But if we can visualize uh, roughly where there's, those are originating and inserting, that's going to help us deduce what their actions are. Also remember, as you are learning about these muscles, palpate them on yourself um, or on a partner, ask them to perform different movements of those joints and then feel which muscles are working. And that will help you to not just memorize it, but to know and understand the content well. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you have any questions about the content we just went over, the muscle actions of the elbow and radial ulnar joints, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to answer your questions as best I can or point you to other resources that you can continue your studying. 
Speaking of continuing to study, the next region I'll be covering in these videos is the wrist and hand, specifically the bony landmarks of the wrist and hand joints. So head on over here to continue learning about that. If you missed any of the structural kinesiology videos, they are over here in this playlist packaged up neatly for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Dr. Gooden with this series on structural kinesiology.